So now let's just do another quick question using the Soderbergh criteria. So the last question was using the modified Goodman criteria. Now we will use the Soderbergh theory or criteria on page 447 in the new FE handbook. So we have a steel bar it undergoes cyclic loading. Again, we're at the cyclic loading condition, right? And such a we have the sigma max is the maximum stress is 60 kilo so the case for kilo psi pound per square inches so it's pound per square inches si is square inches kilo pound square inches so that's 60 for the max the minimum is negative 20 so the minimum here is actually the compressive right so negative is compression by our side convention this is the tension so for the material s ultimate so this is the ultimate strength for that material whether it may be steel in this case or a certain type of steel is 80 kilo psi and sy so this is the yield strength of 65 kpsi kilo psi kilo pound per square inches so based on the Soderbergh criteria the materials endurance limit in kpsi so all the units are fine or given the same units is what what is the materials endurance limit so we want to find what variable it's going to be s e right s e stands for endurance the strength at endurance right strength endurance endurance limit so that's what we're finding and we know we're using the Soderbergh theory so for our solution Let's denote the equation and try to plug in what we need. So the equation is sigma A divided by SE. So this is what we're looking for, right? SE plus sigma M. So this is the mean divided by SY. And this is greater than or equal to 1. It basically says we have to be greater than or equal to 1. So basically you can just set this equal to 1. But I'll just keep it like that. So we have that, that's the Soderbergh theory, and we know we need sigma A and sigma M. SE, we are looking for, SY is actually given, right? We're not going to use S ultimate, that's just extra in this case. But the tricky part is finding sigma A and sigma M, and the handbook doesn't actually show us how to find that. I believe they expect us to know how to find it, so what we will have to do for sigma a let's do that first is apply this equation so sigma a I would have this on your equation sheet or we can actually prove that in a second so this is the equation we take the maximum stress minus the minimum divided by 2 so basically that's the alternating stress so we talked about this stuff in the last video but we know the alternating is gonna be this part so this is the, let's say the negative this is the positive so we take the the maximum so basically we start here we go to a maximum we take that maximum value subtract it from the minimum value and divide by two we want to get this term so we in this case you have to make sure that you subtract right we're finding this so we have to actually take this minus this then divide by 2 so that's our sigma a for the alternating so let's do that we take our maximum so the maximum in this case is 60 kpsi minus the minimum so it's going to be minus minus 20 so you have to be careful this is negative it's compressive Keep that negative sign and keep this minus, right? So KPSI divided by 2. And we get sigma A to be about 40. Okay, so we have that. Now we find sigma M. So for that one, it's the mean, right? It's at the middle. So we should be good with mean, right, from stats. So we just take the top value plus the bottom value divide by 2 and we get the average in the middle so it's sigma m it's we estimate that average so it's gonna be that so we take our sigma max 
plus, so for the mean you add, for A you subtract sigma min divided by 2. So for that you take 60 kpsi plus the negative 20 kpsi divided by 2. And that gives us 20 kpsi. So now we have our A, our mean, and we do apply that equation. So the A is going to be the 40 kpsi divided by SE. Then we do plus the mean is going to be the 20. divided by the SY, so SY is going to be the yield, so it's 65, and let's just say it has to be equal or greater than 1, so it has to be 1, right, if we're under this criteria, so let's just set it equal to 1, so then you just solve for SE, so you basically do the math for this, subtract it on this side, and it's simple algebra there or you can use the solver so I see I believe we should get about I got 57.8 KP SI again this is under what criteria the Soderberg right so the answer should be D